Hello! In this video I'm going to show you how to use physics to make an awesome sounding tongue drum. I started by milling some cherry down to a random thickness. I then jointed both sides using my table saw by fastening the cherry to some scrap MDF and using the straight edge as a guide along the fence. I then ripped a thin strip off the other side to make everything parallel. To calculate the length of each tongue, I used the formula for the frequency of a fixed bar at one end, as this is essentially what each tongue is. I rearranged the formula to solve for length. That way I can choose the frequency I want and calculate the length based on my material's thickness, density, and elastic modulus. Don't worry, I did the math for you. Check out the video description for a link to the length calculator. You can choose to work in inches, however I found for this particular project, the metric system works best. All you need to do is select the material you're using, enter the thickness, and choose the frequency you want to tune your tongue to. You can look up the frequency for musical notes with a quick Google search. Then, just repeat the process for each tongue and use the calculations to lay out a pattern for your drum. For this drum, I measured the length from where the base of the tongue meets the inner end piece instead of the full length of my cut lines. Turns out this was wrong and I should have made my tongues a little shorter. When laying out your drum, be sure to make sure the length starts at the beginning of each slit. This will help you get closer to your desired frequency. Visit my blog for some more detailed pictures to make sure you get this right. I use the top to set my fence, then rip some maple to width. These will be used for the end pieces, and then I cut everything down to size with the miter saw. I repeated the process for the sides of the box using some half inch plywood. Now here is where I wish I hadn't already cut my tongues. For future builds, do the glue up first, then cut your tongues into your assembled box. This helps the top stay rigid during the glue up, and you can avoid warping of the tongues under clamping pressure. It makes for much easier tuning in my experience. Just check out part one of my drum series to see how much trouble I had when trying to tune by clamping the sides on the box during the tuning process. So right away I noticed a buzz on one of the tongues. This was due to cutting the tongues before the glue up, causing one of the tongues to be bent down during clamping. As you could hear, clamping down the base of the tongue fixed the buzz. So I decided to screw it. Turns out screwing is a great way to remove unwanted buzz.
Before doing any tuning, I wanted to check the frequency of each tongue and compare it to the calculated value. I used my built-in mic and a free co program called iSpectrum to check the frequency of each tongue. As you can see, each tongue came in much lower than the desired frequency. I think this was due to my error in determining where to measure the length from. Because of this miscalculation, I ended up tuning my drum to different notes than I had planned. However, because the relative lengths were still close, the tuning process only took me about 15 minutes for the whole drum. Using a Forstner bit, I removed material from the tip of each drum to bring the frequency up. If I wanted to lower them, I would need to remove material from the bass, but this wasn't needed for this drum. Next, I built a smaller drum with the plan to tune it to the G major scale so I can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to myself before bed. Again, I used the length calculator to size each tongue. This time the frequency came out a little higher than planned, but they were relatively close. I was really happy with this. The drum still needed some fine tuning, so I removed some material from the base of each tongue until I lowered the frequency to the desired notes. It was a lot to ask of this drum to fit eight tongues in such a small space, and as a result the higher frequencies were a little harder to hear, but I managed to tune it as planned. Overall, I am really happy with how the length calculator worked and how these drums turned out. They sound really good. I will be using what I have learned to build some bigger drums, so be sure to subscribe as I have a really awesome hybrid drum plan and I'm also going to show you how to build a corded 12-tongue drum. Thanks for watching.